I was just about to replace my uh, old AC41 that uh, I used for testing a long time ago when I joined Vercada. And I wanted to uh, ramp up quickly by actually having a product in front of me and uh, trying to install it and test it in different scenarios. Um, and that gave me an idea to create a series of videos showcasing Vercada Access Control and taking it from scratch, from getting one of these new controllers, that's the AC42, out of the box, installing it, and then running you through commands and the configurations that you need. But we have to start from somewhere. And in this video, I'm going to unbox it, and then I'm going to show you a few ideas on how you can test access control yourself. With Vercada, you can uh, purchase or trial what's called the DK11, which is an access controller together with a camera and a fully functional door and reader. It all come, comes in a nice package. But if you're looking to get one for your lab and test it in different scenarios, nothing actually beats the original. And the question still remains on how are you able to simulate multiple doors, DPIs, REXs, without actually purchasing those devices. More on that a bit later, but let me show you what's in the box. As with everything Vercada, each box comes with a serial number that you'll use to activate the device and connect it to your cloud construct we call an organization. So this will tie that device to that particular customer up until one of the organization admins decides to delete it. As you open the box, we are presented with the controller itself. You see it's quite uh, sturdy. It even has a um, key to keep it safe so people won't tamper with it. And underneath it, you'll get a cable and an installation kit. Now this kit contains a nice uh, mounting template that you can just pull, put on the wall and drill your holes, screws, a screwdriver, and a set of keys. Here you also have the install guide. In order to minimize waste, everything kind of moved online, so all you need to do is scan the QR code with the device of your choice, and then you'll get all the instructions on how to set up the device. Opening the box, you get uh, some useful information here related to the fire interface, wiring diagram, grounding, and also the LED behaviors. Remember that, as I might have said multiple times before, you should pre-provision this device on your desk by plugging it in, adding it to command, and making sure everything shows as solid blue before attempting to put it on the wall. Because again, in a real world, anything can happen. The network might have uh, issues, the cables might be faulty, the device itself might be faulty. So you don't want to be in a position where you put this on the wall, you wire everything, you turn it on, nothing works, and now you have to backpedal and install the old controller back because otherwise the doors will be left open. Talking about the, the controller itself, this is a four door controller. So each door will be marked one, two, three, four. That will correspond to the logical door in command. Each door will have a toggle and this is to choose whether or not you want to run the lock either dry, meaning you use your own power supply or wet where the controller itself will supply either 12 or 24 volts. This might work, for example, with an electric strike or with a small mag lock that doesn't require loads and loads of power. Next to it, you'll have the terminals for the readers. Vercada Access Control currently supports any Wigan-based reader or Vercada's own AD series readers, which are OSDP-based, thus different terminals. A terminal for the lock itself, with normally open or normally closed components, two Rex options per door, plus one DPI. On the top, you'll get an auxiliary cassette. So this can be used for inputs or outputs, such as third-party intercoms, panic buttons, or in case of a lockdown, you can activate, for example, a strobe. On the bottom, you have the fire alarm interface that will actually allow you 
with the fire relay to bring down power to all the doors that run wet so the controller itself is powering the lock fire control interfaces are something quite specialized i already did a video i'll leave a link here for you to check if that's of interest on the bottom you'll get the rj45 port so that will connect the controller with your lan and allow it to connect to the internet over port 443 and 123 and a couple of terminals for one or two backup batteries and that will mean that the controller itself will still remain online if the main power fails and talking about power this is where you'll plug in your kettle cable and you'll actually run it depending on how it comes either on the top bottom or on the cutouts on either side that's great so far we i can put this on the wall but how can we actually test this let me show you this behind me is my original ac41 and you can see it is one because as opposed to having terminal blocks like the 42 and 62 it has cassettes that are removable that uncover a usb-c interface and that's something that we moved away after getting a lot of feedback from the field Otherwise, everything kind of looks the same. Four cassettes, an auxiliary part, you can run them wet or dry, with another striking difference that the AC41 does not have a dedicated fire relay interface. As you can see behind me, I'm actually uh, excited to finally uh, do a bit of uh, tidy up. The loads of uh, cables, uh, some actually running to real components. I have a maglock, I have a powered request to exit button, I have an old Mercada reader, one of the new AD33s, even a Wigan based HID one with a keypad. And I kind of assembled them from online marketplaces. You can even find them second hand at a very low price. Now for the rest of them, I used a series of regular buttons and LEDs that will actually allow me to test and make sure that, let's say if uh, the DPI is open or the Rex is pressed, that the system actually inverts the relay. So for example, one of these uh, buttons simulates an intercom that is pressed that unlocks one of the doors. What I'll do now is that I will plug in the AC42, tidy up some of the cables here behind me. And in the next video, I'll show you how to configure it from scratch. Again, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment.